Start the right way. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Um, months later, after our trip, we are finally putting our faces on a screen again to talk about it. Um, so last year, uh, year before last, now we went through um, a little loop around Algonquin Park, starting at Catfish, going uh, up the, the Petawawa and down the uh, Nipissing, or as I like to refer to it, Nipissing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> starting at, at uh, Cedar Lake, so Brent Cedar Lake. Oh, C Cedar, that's what it was, starting at, at Cedar Lake. Um, and uh, last year, we started at Brent again, but instead of doing a loop and coming back to Brent, we ended up doing um, a much longer trip, but ending at Wendigo just outside the park. So rather than doing a complete circuit, we, we parked a car in one place and then sort of looped around. Yeah. And, and it's a D kind of a unclosed loop. There you go. You got it. There it is. So, so there's, there's our two trips from uh, 2020 and 2021. Uh, the, the, oh, I should put my laser pointer on, maybe see if that's effective. Uh, pointer options. Laser. We can see your cursor, but laser is good too. Oh, can we? Okay. Um, so uh, this blue trip was 2020. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, that was 72 kilometers that we did in basically four and a half days, I think it was, right? Yeah, I think actually if you do uh, start the clock, um, we had half days on either side. So right. it was exactly whatever whatever 72 plus 24 is, um, <laughs> um, 96 hours. I think it was exactly 96 hours. Nice. So um, that's right. We had a half day. Uh, at the start because I drove up from Waterloo and then a half day at the end because I drove back to Waterloo. Yep. Um, and last year, I think we did five days and it was basically the same thing. We started off at about midday, yep. maybe a little before uh, at Brent. Uh, for the first two days, we sort of more or less stayed to the same path, stayed at different camping sites. Um, but then after day two, we were really off into a different part of the park, uh, exploring away. And by the time day six rolled around, we were coming out at Wendigo around noon, where uh, I had parked my car. And then we drove back to Brent to collect your car. Well, technically not my car. Technically, <laughs> technically. it's Ungren sister's car. Thank That's you, uh, Kathy and Janet, for lending uh, me the car, because my mother's car broke down the day before we were meant to go into the park and i was uh worried about how we were able to we were going to be able to do the trip uh and these guys came through in a in a big um a big uh clinch what's the word they came through for us big <laughs> there you go uh, so so basically you brought two sets of um canoe mounting kit uh left one in the car when we dropped mine here drove us in the canoe over there. And when we came out, we put the canoe on the top of my car, drove to Brent, transferred it to your car, and then sort of went our, our separate ways from that point. Yeah. And if I remember, our round, our round trip, our trip from Brent up to Wendigo was about 96 kilometers. And I say six days, but if you do the, consider the half days, it was basically five. Yep. And yep. Um, that's uh, one-way portages because we did do one-way portage as well. Like the Ubermensch that we are. Indeed. So um, on the first day, it was very similar to 2020, except rather than staying um, up in the upper catfish, I think we stayed on this island here in 2020. Okay. Uh, last year, we had to keep on a trucking because all of these campsites were occupied, I think. And, and if I remember correctly, we were down here in this little bay. Yeah, I think that's right. 
Absolutely. You're not going to uh, mention our lovely ascent of Unicorn Hill this year? Oh, I'm a gonna. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying, here's the path that we went. It's the overview to start. Excellent. (laughs) So we'll we'll start at the start. Um, And uh, that started uh, on Cedar Lake at Brent. Um, We rocked in there um, at about midday. It was beautiful out. Yeah. There were lots of people around. Uh, you and I basically uh, immediately chucked a bunch of stuff into the canoe. Uh, and we were here. I think that's where the launch site is. Okay. Uh, and to um, track our way over to the Petawawa, you have to come out around that point and go across, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's so, not a hard right. It's like maybe a 30 degree uh, off the like point. That. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so, so there's the, the, the two amigos at the beginning of the trip. Yeah. Um, and we did, uh, we were right back into the rhythm of the last half of the trip from the previous time. Uh, I think we were a lot smoother getting our stuff together and crossing, um, Cedar Lake this year for the first go than, than we were last year. It was nice to be back in the, uh, canoe with you, uh, Scott. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the whole trip this year felt a lot, or last year now, uh, felt a lot more comfortable to me than the, the first year because I had a lot better of an idea of what to expect and how to do things and where I should be sitting. Although every now and again, you had to reposition me because it would depend on the, the weight distribution. Uh, and and the which ropes to leave where. And which ropes to leave where. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so so we we didn't go without having a panic of losing something but we'll get to that <laughs> that's, important. <laughs> that's important um but uh here's us at the start um Beautiful. no launch point was awesome uh brent store uh I, we didn't go to the brent store at this point but after our six day trip i drove back to waterloo and then the next day drove back again to algonquin with my family and then Here. stayed another week (laughs) so so that was a lot of fun and it was at that point that i i got to uh have a chin wag with jake and he is a spectacular human being so uh anybody who might be watching this at some point in the future uh go meet jake he's going to outlive us all i'm sure he is a legend uh and then the other thing since we're talking about that week that you spent afterwards and it's on this map you had campsite two or so right on on this map which uh These are the Uh, um, front country campsites at Brent over to the left of that map. And your campsite was spectacular. It was right on the water and uh, really beautiful. And only those first five over there are actually on the water and the rest of them are a little bit back. So you lucked out and it was. Oh yeah. Well, we we scoped it out and and booked it uh, well in advance. And when we drove back up, so I don't own a canoe. We we're using your canoe. That's that's yours here. When we drove back up, I went to Brent's store and rented a canoe and we just paddled it out and literally paddled it and just pulled it up right beside our tent on, on the lake. Awesome. It was awesome. And really nice swimming. Water was nice and warm. It was it was really good. So anyway, uh, after we got all of our uh, kit unpacked and in the boat, um, <laughs> we were off on a hiking. Uh, I didn't this year have any pictures. Oh, I see. There's where the notes uh, for the cross is. So I've, I've circled it here, but the cross was actually back here. Um, there it is in the wood, um, in the woods. Uh, I, I missed that the first year that we did it, even though it's literally just off the side of the path because I had my head down a huffing and a puffing <laughs> <laughs> through these portages. The, the first two, the 715 meter portage and the 300 meter portage, those aren't bad. Like you, you can do those pretty easy. You do get a little bit sweaty, but it's no big deal. Yep. Um, and I won't belabor those points because we've spoken about that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year when we did this, uh, we did sort of pull in through here because that's, that's, I believe, where you're going up through Unicorn Hill, if I'm not mistaken. No, that, um, that is the fall. So that's uh, the, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So so we, we, last year when we approached the falls, we didn't actually take a picture of it. We just sort of got out and 
and trucked it yeah. because we were concerned about time. Yeah. Sorry, the, the year before last. Yeah. But last year when we got there, we're like, yeah, we got this. This is no problem. So we we were a little bit more gentle in, in how we were approaching stuff, I think. I suggest we call it last trip and this trip so we don't uh, confuse the years. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Uh, and I can guarantee you I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do my best, but it's, it's probably not happening. <laughs> I think our large viewership will forgive you. And <laughs> I think so too, given that like um, we'll get five views and three of them will be me and my mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think we're good. Hi, Scott's mom. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Um, so yeah, so, so Unicorn Hill. Um, I've, I've, <laughs> I've left those notes in, uh, or repeated those notes from our 2020 trip. They don't change. <laughs> they don't change. Uh, so universal truth. It's a universal truth. So, so the, the second trip that we did 2021, um, I extended my training regime by a week or so <laughs> of, of trying to do some running and get just some for this running. hill. <laughs> just for that hill. Uh, and, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it, did. Uh, so it just <laughs> didn't work well enough perhaps, but, uh, yeah, it would have been so, worth so, it. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, you hit this thing and you see at the bottom, it's like almost two and a half kilometers of mostly uphill. Yeah. Uh, and you're carrying your stuff and the path looks like that forever. Um, and eventually, uh, you, you get to a rest area in 2020, we collapsed probably a hundred meters before the rest area. Indeed. So the difference with, with our trip, uh, our second trip, I got it was that we knew the rest area was coming. So we pushed through and got there. I think you were actually in pretty good shape, Martin, but I was suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a better time on Unica and Hill this time than last time. Mainly, I think, because I didn't stop and pick up mushrooms with the canoe on my back for the first 10 minutes of the hike up uh, like I did the first year. Yeah. So, so the first year you had your little mushroom collection sack on your hip yeah. and you basically did squats for a kilometer and a half before yeah. you finally thought, oh, this is dumb. <laughs> then the mushrooms went soggy and we didn't even use them except the feet of turtle. Right. But in 2021 we've we've um skipped that part yeah uh, or you did and just trucked it up the hill and you were actually in the lead this time uh and we're waiting for me so this was uh i think taken by you as i was coming up to that rest area yeah. and i was sweating like a pig <laughs> and i thought oh man i'm in trouble <laughs> <laughs> so i got to the top and i was just drenched my shirt was hanging off me and i thought uh yeah okay this is this is the same as last year <laughs> and the reason why i thought oh i'm in trouble is because i i knew i could do this one but in 2021 we had an even longer portage that we planned later in the trip yeah so i was thinking i'm going to be tired on day five or whatever it is and then i've got 3.6 kilometer hike through the woods for yeah. that portage right? <laughs> um but you know, whatever we, we made it. So eventually you get to the top of the hill. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the top of unicorn or if that's the portage, that one's the top oh, of unicorn. That's where you, uh, you get out of the portage at unicorn. There is a campsite right there. And for a, uh, portage campsite, that's really quite nice. Uh, the only problem is people will be walking through your campsite, but you've got the falls right next to you. You got a nice open area and it's, uh, it's a nice little lake up there. So this is the relief point of, uh, of Unicorn Hill. And nice, these pictures are coming out nicely. I'm glad. They, they, they came out quite nicely. And in fact, if you go off to the sort of left and out around that way, um, there's a path that comes out, I think, to a bridge here, right? There's, there's a steel bridge there where you can actually walk across. Otherwise, you're canoeing like 80 meters across that. And that's what we did this year, right? We, we just kept walking. Yeah, we just, we just kept chugging once we got here. Last, uh, the year before last, the first trip, yep. I think we canoed it. We did, yeah. I've canoed it every other time. Yeah, but in, in 2021, we just got there and thought, F it, we'll, we'll just 
just continue the portage. So our 2.345 kilometers, I think, turned into like 2.7 or something like this. Yeah, maybe three. Uh, I definitely remember thinking it was going to be shorter, <laughs> uh, the second little part there. And I was definitely tired when I got to the next stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was A1. Uh, we, we made it. Um, so eventually we ended up, um, finding a place for some lunch. Uh, and this was your, your first walrus of the trip. <laughs> Spectacularly done. Um, I think we had lunch actually is a little bit off this map. It was back here a little way. Yeah. Uh, and then putting up. in where we, uh, cross the bridge and then get back into the that exactly. lake. I don't remember the name of the lake. Uh, and we didn't have lunch at the same spot as last year. We canoed up a little bit and uh, had a kind of more open spot that we found uh, behind. Yeah, it. yeah. It was like on a, uh, a steep incline, not quite a cliff, but, you know, sort of a steep incline that came down into the lake at that point. Um, but I think up here at the end is that 80 meter portage. Yeah, that's right. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, so basically we had our lunch. Um, I don't remember where we found all of these chanterelles. It's just up to the left there. I think before it, it was just up here. I think we, yeah. We stopped to fish at the, uh, at the little, uh, swift there that you, that you, uh, portage around. And that was just to the left. Mm. The big, big area of chanterelles. I didn't even catch them all. Some were too quick. <laughs> they were fast. So, you know, you could be forgiven. Um, but I, I think we had an awful lot of mushrooms on last year's trip, yes, the, yes. the 2021 trip. So we were really lucky with finding a lot of wild food um, going through the park in 2021. We had fish twice. Mm -hmm. Yep. We had yep. fish twice and mushrooms, I think, like four times. Does that sound right? Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. So, so I mean, that was great. And, and of course, you were a pig in shit finding these mushrooms. <laughs> so, They're the so, best. <laughs> it was great. Um, but yeah, so, so we found a bunch of mushrooms and then put in at the top of catfish. In 2020, we stayed, I think it was at campsite five or three. Which one was it? I think remember? it's a three. I think because there was, there's not a campsite right next to the, that island campsite. So I think it's three. You think it's three? That was a great campsite. Yeah. Um, when we stayed there in 2020, we um, basically went past this other island. We just canoed past it um, in favor of getting there and setting up camp and going for a swim and all that sort of thing. Um, but on that island, there's an old uh, amphibious boat called an alligator that used to be used in, in the logging industry. So last year, 2021, we went to check that out on the way through. And that's what the thing looks like. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't have a me or a Martin for scale. Um, what would you say is the height of this? That's Four probably, feet. yeah, I would say that. I was going to say a bit more than a meter. Yeah. 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 So, so I mean, it's, it's substantial. The metal there is, is quite heavy. It's heavy duty metal. So the fact it was amphibious, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same. I, I wonder how amphibious, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, that's it. So, so we went to check that out. And then when we came back out around, we saw that somebody was in our goddamn campsite. Uh, it is ours. They were squatting there and I didn't appreciate it, but whatever. No respect. We got no respect. We got no respect. Right. Um, so, so we just kept on trucking and then ended up coming all the way down here to campsite seven, uh, which in my opinion was actually a lovely campsite. It really was. We went over and uh, we're going to check out campsite eight and somebody was there and mentioned yeah. that several of the next campsites were also taken. So then we yeah, yeah. went back to seven, which was uh, really nice. The only reason I think we didn't take it right away is because it didn't have the direct access to the, the, um, sun down i don't think you could see west that, that's right so so um actually this is from the basically where we put the the canoe in looking out across that point uh hid the the sunset yeah. but 
I, I actually didn't have a problem with it. Uh, it. It was a lovely sunset. We got there um, well enough before sunset that we got everything all set up and, and, and whatnot, and we're good to go. Um, big ass pot of mushrooms to accompany our dinner. Uh, so that was amazing. Okay. Uh, as, and as the sun set, I think we tried some fishing off the point here, but didn't have any luck um, there. Um, but we basically set up our, our fire and then uh, got into some consumables and uh, ended up, there's actually some really nice flat rocks back here. So we just sort of laid out on the rocks for like two hours, just chatting, watching shooting stars and stuff, because it was a beautifully clear night as well. Wow. Um, and that was absolutely beautiful. And we had several nights like that uh, while we were camping, um, where the sky was just a carpet of stars, beautiful bright moons, and the loons that were on the lakes, they would each be in bays and would call out to each other yeah. in different calls, and the calls would echo. So you'd hear one guy shout from like way off in the east, and the and its call would echo down the lake somewhere, and then another one would call with a different call, and its echo would then shout out somewhere. It was awesome. So we were just loving that. And it's or amazing how sound. loud they sound, right? It's uh, yeah, yeah. You know, just this little bird and not close by, but mm -hmm. you're sitting there and it carries. It, it carries, yeah. Good volume. Good volume. So, um, end of the evening, we got ourselves all set up and. Uh, had a, a good snooze out. I can't remember if it was at dinner time that night. I think it was. No, it was the next morning. It was the next morning. Yeah. Okay. Because at some point we finished our meal and um, of course had to go wash our dishes and stuff. And, and when we did, we're like, uh Oh, we've lost a spoon. A long uh, spoon. A well, long spoon. <laughs> there are two types of spoons we have in our camping kit. And the, the long spoon has maybe that long of a handle and it's really convenient because when you do the uh, freeze-dried meals you don't have to pour anything out you can just use the uh, long spoon without getting your hand all messy going into the pouch uh, and these are titanium and fancy and I've had them for a few years and I love long spoons and I was putting the, the dishes away and there seemed to be one long spoon and not two long spoons. And we spent a long time going back and forth <laughs> between yep. the little area where we had washed the dishes and the campsite, the fire, uh, back and forth, back and forth, pushing down bushes. It can't be far. It has to be there. It's silver. Why can't we effing find it? It was probably half an hour or 45 minutes, and uh, I just did not want to let it go. So, yep. And then eventually, uh, we did let it go <laughs> because it was getting late in the day. And we're like, well, I guess the next camper is going to find a nice titanium spoon here, um, which was crazy because the path was, what, maybe 20 feet, something yeah, like that. It wasn't very yeah. big, right? And we went over it like literally crawling and lifting <laughs> branches and stuff, trying to find this. I was like, what in the hell? I know I didn't take it and throw it out through the woods, so it has to be here. Yeah, but exactly. it I was a little bit sad. I was a little bit sad about that. Yeah, yeah, I was a little bit bummed. And, and it was a, a bit of a mirror of the 2020 <laughs> trip because leaving the campsite on day two for 2020, I'd left the bear hang behind. <laughs> <laughs> Unbeknownst to us at that point. Or Unbeknownst to us <laughs> until we, we set camp the night of uh, day two and in the year 2020. So this time I'm like, ah, God damn it. Now we've lost a spoon. And I did the dishes and I'm like, I'm going to be fucking eating with my hand for the rest <laughs> of this. <laughs> but, you know, when you go camping with the putts, these are the things. <laughs> I think we would have managed. <laughs> I think we would have figured it out. Um, so anyway, that was our cliffhanger <laughs> for, <laughs> for uh, campsite uh, the first. Okay, so so that's all that I have for pictures of our should first we, day going through. Should we? That I put in there, but that's great. Should we uh, uh, stop the recording? Split it up into days. We did that last year, right? Yeah, we did. Uh, we just let the recording go super long last year, and then I trimmed it. Oh, I see. Okay. So, 
uh, we can we can do that this time as well if you'd like. Or you can hit stop and then start again. Nope. Nope. All right. I'm going to escape. And I will stop sharing briefly. And I will open day two. <laughs>